Before we start the meeting this evening, just want to uh, announce a couple of things. First of all, did everyone get a chance to look at the uh, JC Parade roster? Okay, everyone got to see it? Got to, okay, just so we don't miss anyone. Second thing is the governor will be in town tomorrow at 1 o'clock. He'll be at Fire Station 3. Uh, he'll be s discussing uh, some of the issues which are going on in the state. Hopefully he'll touch, uh, touch a little bit on the budget where he's at with that. So if anyone or all the aldermen or any one of you can make it out to Fire Station 3 at 1 o'clock, um, hopefully you can come out there and, and support him. So look forward to seeing you. Okay, with that. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we have Deputy Chief Shervin with us this evening. And Deputy Chief, could you just fill us in on a tornado and the sirens yesterday? And there was a question why the city didn't turn on their sirens yesterday. Could you explain that, the reasoning and Certainly what went on I'd here? Be, I'd be happy to. Uh, good evening. Could you hold the microphone, please? Sure. Is that on? Try it once. Testing. Te yep. yep. It sounds Good. like it's got enough power there. So. Good. <laughs> On uh, Sunday, July 6th, uh, 2003, at approximately uh, 5.15 p.m., information was received through the National Weather Service of a tornado in the area of Maywell, Mayville, located in the western Dodge County. The inclement weather was moving in an easterly direction and, and a funnel cloud had also been noted in the area of Kewaskum near the far western part of Sheboygan County. The inclement weather was moving in an easterly direction with the cities of Random Lake and later Cedar Grove in its path. Uh, the Sheriff's Department activated the county sirens because a portion of the county was likely to be in the path of the funnel clouds. The city of Sheboygan was not in, the, in their path. The Sheboygan Police Department was advised of the situation by the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department. <coughs> Sheboygan Police Supervisors assigned officers to monitor the west side of the city, I-43 and Highway 23, and I-43 and Highway 28. Sheboygan Police Officers monitored the weather along with the dispatch monitoring communication and radio equipment. Additional monitoring was conducted via computer in the weather channel. Due to the fact that all the information obtained indicated that the possible tornado activity was proceeding approximately 15 miles south of the city, the emergency warning sirens were not activated. As the storm was proceeding east, police supervision was receiving information that it was dissipating. It was felt that prema uh, premature activation of the warning signs, sirens, could cause undue stress and create hazardous situations for hospitals, nursing homes, businesses, and individuals hurriedly seeking shelter. The Sheboygan Police Department is concerned for the security of our citizens and are committed to providing the best possible police service to ensure their safety. We care about our citizens, and at times we meet, need to make a judgment call. The supervisors making that determination did so with every effort being made to make the best and wisest decision. If, in their opinion, the situation would have changed to actively threatening citizens, the sirens would have been activated. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Hopefully that'll explain that. Betty, if you get any calls, you'll be able to refer that. Okay. Okay, with that, Pat, we'll start the regular this regular seventh meeting of Common Council. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonnet? Here. Doyle? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Rindfleisch? Here. Stephen? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangeman? Here. Warner? Here. Winninger? Here. 16 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask that we, um, I would move to approve the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting in the same stand approved as entered on the record. Right. Move to the second that we approve the minutes of the previous Council meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Grawford, a pledge. Alderman Grawford, please send a pledge, please.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have one notice this evening, and that's the ordinance has been introduced for the vacation and discontinuance of that part of South 12th Street from the north line of Indiana Avenue, north to the south line of the railroad right of way between blocks 245 and 246 of the original plat. Jim Rangel. Jim, you'll have five minutes. Come to the microphone. Pick up the microphone and use it, please. This is in regard to the parking rules. I uh, was at the rules committee last week or week before, and uh, they said if they're not, um, they're not broken, don't fix them. Well, I feel they are broken. I, I feel that the winter parking rules are terrible. Parking one side, flip-flopping daily is really bad. Bad for retired people, people with two cars, people with no driveway, people with no garage. I live on South Water Street. There are eight residences, four are double flats, 15 different families and renters, 18 cars, and only three driveways. Two blocks away, uh, the rest of Water Street, they've got uh, nine residences, six are double flats, approximately 18 different families and renters, 17 cars and five driveways. I live here 30 years, I don't care to move, but if I'd have to, I would. I mean, I'm just getting sick of it. During a snow emergency, we can't even park on either side because we are on a snow emergency route just so the plows can turn around. I park over at the Hunold, uh, old Hunold parking lot by the meter because you can park there overnight. That's two blocks away. Normally, people don't move their cars every day. I know they're supposed to, but they don't, especially if a person has more than one car or if there are double flats in the vicinity or there's two drivers in the house. They've got two cars, people renting from the family. I would like to know how you people on a council, if you had to park on the street like we do, it's below zero hour, before you go to bed, you have to move the car to the other side of the street. And you say, why didn't you have it on that other side of the street right away? Well, there's people that park there during the, during the day. You've got friends coming over. You, know, you, just, you just don't, you get groceries, you unload them, you, you forget about the car. I don't know how many times my kid told me before I'm ready to go to bed, I gotta move the car across the street. He's like, I got mine moved, you gotta move yours now. Or we got a blizzard outside or the start of a snowstorm, we have to go out special just to move the car to the other side of the street. If it would be on the right side right away, it'd be okay. It'd be like parking, like they had one year at a time, one year and flip flop the next year. Um, uh, let's see what else they got. Sometimes it's so cold a car won't start. Well, normally when it happened to me, I would just take a cab or walk to work. I wouldn't worry about it. It warms up in a couple of days and she's boiling anyway. Now you have to either get the thing moved, you gotta get it jumped, you gotta get, uh, spend time outside in this beautiful cold weather just to get it to the other side of the street. You people are making the winter time a real hassle, much worse than it should be. The winters are easier nowadays with the snow and the cold, but with all your rules, it's just more of a pain in the neck. Last year we had no, no, no snow emergency, but we had the hassle. Please change the rules back to one side all winter till the year changes. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Alderman Groff. Thank you. Consent yeah. agenda. I would move that um, for documents 7 1 through 7 32 that all ROs and communications be accepted and filed, and that all RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass all resolutions. Make that exception number 30. Okay. With the exception of number 30, Alderman Graff? Right, with the exception of number 30, which- Will lie over. Will lie, well, right. um, after talking to the chairman of the committee, um, it should be sent back to public protection and safety. Okay, committee. refer back. Okay. Do you need a motion? No. No, that's okay. 
Okay. Okay, we have a motion be Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. On 728, which okay. is um, the document uh, regarding the uh, plan for distribution of the Florence Heimbecker Trust, I just want to make a comment about that. That was discussed in, in Finance Committee, and we agreed with it. But uh, one of the things that were done uh, with, that, with that document was setting a limit of $5,000 for um, use for operations for the senior center. Uh, they placed that limit on there. Um, I don't believe they really had to, but uh, they decided to so that everybody knew that mo the majority of those funds would be spent for either construction or, or something like that that's needed. But uh, knowing that the next several years are going to be very, um, very tough budgeting years, um, I hope that they have a way to relieve that, uh, that limit of $5,000 and um, maybe up it in case they need it. And that's the only comment I want to make on that. Otherwise, everything was good to Thank you. We have a motion before us to accept and adopt all our C's, accept to file all our O's and pass communications or resolutions. Alderman Moody. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull 727 for a separate roll call vote, please. This is um, various confirming resolutions for water lateral replacements and water main extensions. This is in the uh, area of like 14th of Broadway where I live in Colorado Court and uh, Colorado Court, Union Avenue, and, and 15th Street and Broadway Avenue. These people did get notice, pretty short notice, that they had to uh, pay for these uh, laterals. And, and I've been consistent with voting against this, and I would like to vote against it again. Thank you. Okay, with that, hearing no other path, do a roll call on 727. <coughs> okay. Berg? Bonnet, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, no. Moody, no. Perez, no. Rinfleisch, Aye. Stephan, Aye. Ben Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, no. Wangerman, no. Warner, Aye. Weniger, Aye. Bauman. Aye. 11 ayes, 5 noes. Motion carried. Okay, the rest, 7th. 7-1 through 7-32, if there's no other discussion. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bonet, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, <coughs> Stephan, Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangeman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. Thank you for coming this evening. 733 through 737 to be referred. 738 will lie over to August 4th. 739. Same thing. Same thing. 738 and 39 both lie over till August 4th. 740 through 753 to be referred. 754 by Alderman Groff, Winninger, Bonet, Doyle, and Stephan transferring funds to increase appropriations for the, for the payment of the balance of the mortgage of South Pier project land from a general fund advance. Alderman Groff. No, no, I need to ask for suspension. Second. Moved and second for suspension. Are there any objections? Hearing none, proceed. <coughs> um, then uh, just to preface uh, the, the motion, uh, this is so that we can pay off uh, the balance of the the Coke mortgage, which is a lot higher, which is at a lot higher rate than we are borrowing money for right now. Therefore, we're we're really saving money by by doing this this early um, transaction. And with that, I will uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Doyle, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Monty Mayer, Moody, Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Stefan, Van Akron, Aye. Vanderbilt, Aye. Longerman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. 755 by Alderman Graf transferring appropriations into 2003 budget. Alderman Graf. I would ask for suspension. 
Second. Moved and second for a suspension. Are, is, are there any objections to suspension? Hearing none, proceed. Okay. And the reason for this resolution is that um, we have the, um, we, we did this transfer before, but we didn't have the appropriation account set up. So this will set up the appropriation account so that the money that we are borrowing will have a place to, to go. Um, <laughs> so with that, I will move that the resolution be put upon its passage. So moved a second, the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Brinfleisch? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Ben Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 756 by Alderman Groff, Winninger, Bonet, Doyle, and Stephan, establishing limits for the 2004 budget request for the general fund. Your Honor, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved, moved and seconded. The resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Your Honor, under discussion, I um, need to make an amendment to this, and everybody has a copy of it on their desk. So unless somebody would prefer, um, I will not read it. Uh, but it's two paragraphs that, uh, and Pat, do you have a copy of that? You might want to read it just so our public knows. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the amendment would be, uh, be it further resolved that the departmental request for the 2004 general fund budget will exclude positions that are vacant and have not been approved for filling by the Salaries and Grievances Committee as of August 8, 2003. Be it further resolved that the departmental request for 2004 capital outlay appropriations in the general fund shall be delayed until the first quarter of 2004. Okay. Okay, second. I need a second. Okay. Okay, under discussion, right. Alderman Montemere. Excuse me. Uh, thank you. I want to thank the committee for watching our money. I'm glad to see all these suspensions concerning our money and getting a better rate, so forth and so on, and this resolution. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I join uh, Alderman Montemeyer in that um, praise for the for the committee. What I'd like to point out, though, is I have a little problem with the uh, second uh, amend the first amendment to the uh, to the resolution, and I have that uh, concern because it, it appears to effectively eliminate the fundamental responsibility of the Salary and Grievance Committee, and that is uh, in reviewing uh, requests for for positions uh, or for filling positions. Uh, as it as it is now, we will have uh, after August eighth, uh, possibly a lot of people out of work. Well, a lot of people are getting raises, uh, and we will have a lot of people out of work uh, without due discussion to the worthiness of the uh, of the positions. Uh, this, in effect, just eliminates any request for whatever reason without due discussion in the Salary and Grievance Committee. Uh, I believe that this council has needs to trust the Salary and Grievance Committee to make the right decisions and amending the resolution uh, in such manner does not uh, extend that courtesy to the salary and grievance. So I am going to vote against it, uh, the amendment for that reason, and I hope other members do too. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Bauman. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, actually, uh, Alderman Perez took the words right out of my mouth. I possibly will also vote against this uh, proposed uh, 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 change. Okay. Alderman Stephan. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I guess I, I agree with them. I just want to make sure I understand this. The way it reads to me would be if the position was vacant, somebody left, the position was open, and it hadn't been approved to be filled, it wouldn't get filled. But like if somebody, you know, quits or resigns or retires in September, does that mean automatically you're not filling it? So I mm, no. All of them uh, you're all, you know, that's, that's the question. I guess some people right. think it's only the ones that are vacant and not filled as of August 8th because they're not filled because somebody's decided we haven't needed them. Like maybe the Salary Agreements Committee hasn't put them on, said, no, we're not going to fill that one right now. That was my understanding. I guess that's where we need a little clarification. All of them If I have this correctly, Rich is here to, to, <laughs> to help in case I don't. There are a number of positions in various departments that are presently open. 
have not been filled for probably um, six months to a year, if not longer. And those positions have never come to salary and grievance to be asked to be filled. So what we're saying here, if they don't come to salary and grievance, well, first of all, to the mayor and then to salary and grievance, if they don't come to salary and grievance to ask for those positions to be filled before August 8th of 2003, then those positions will not be budgeted in 2004. They will stay on the TO, though. They will stay on the TO, but, but they will not be budgeted. This way it gives some direction to each department head <coughs> that they do not have, if they are not going to ask for that position to be filled by August 8th, don't bother asking for it to be filled in 2004 because there will not be money appropriated for that position in 2004. Okay. Alderman Rainflesh. If that's the case, I definitely agree with that in terms of being able to work with our budget a little bit. But I see the language being a little bit different from that. <clears throat> I would certainly support if that's the intent. However, it looks to me as if we're holding at a zero average increase of 0%, excluding ones that we haven't included yet, meaning that uh, positions that have not been filled by August 8th are excluded from the 0% increase net. That's the language that I would ask to be ch changed. Okay. Alderman Warner. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, I wasn't aware that this amendment was going to be talked about tonight, but I, after I looked at it here, I guess I can support it. And I guess my question would be to Alderman Van Ackman if he thinks August 8th is enough time for any positions that may want to be brought into salary and grievance so they can still review them or if he would need another week. Because I see it's not really an issue of filling the positions. It's a budgetary issue so we can get our budget set up in time and not have something come along at a later date. In 2005, they're still on the, on the TO, and if the position needs to be filled, it's still there. We're not taking it away. It's, it's making sure that we have everything filled up in time for the budget, and I think that's a reasonable request. But if Alderman Van Akron uh, feels he needed another week, I wouldn't be opposed to that either. But I think salary and grievance, <coughs> is, unless, Don, they've changed, there'd be a like possibility of three meetings between now and August 8th. So I guess, in, in my eyes, I would support it. I think it's a worthwhile resolution. So, But I think that salary and grievance, if they think they can meet the, the needs, I don't know that there are that many positions coming forward yet, uh, at least from the departments that I'm uh, in charge of with public protection and safety. I don't, I don't think there's very many that haven't been brought, brought forward already, so. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. I know this is my second time up and I won't ask to stand again. Uh, I have a question for Tom, if I could, please. Sure. Uh, Mr. Holton, is uh, the positions that are open in public works right now, have those been requested through uh, that committee already? No, we had five last year, but the uh, balance we have 13 and a half open right now, and we haven't done any requesting yet for those uh, fillings. Okay, do we have the need to fill those positions? Some of them, yes, and we'll be working with the mayor uh, to determine that. Okay, well, thank you. Hang on, Don. Okay. Wait, Alderman Van, you had your light on. Okay, Alderman Van Akron. I don't think that's uh, enough time to have three meetings that we're going to get swamped by okay. all these open meetings that we're going to have. And also, I'm afraid that some of these positions, these uh, different departments, may be using to cut their, their budget. If we take them away, how are they going to cut their budgets? So there's another concern. They may be using them, holding them back to cut their budgets, because everybody's going to have to cut their budgets. And they may use that as cutting budgets. And if we take it away by August, they won't have that option anymore. What time frame do you need? Well, we don't have a meeting this next week, because we didn't have anything. Right. We still don't have nothing. So nobody's put in for anything. We only got one more in this month and one more in August. That's it. That's two meetings. Okay. Our schedule meetings, if we'd have to, we'd have to call the special meetings at the time. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Van Eck pretty much stated what I was going to follow up with. Thank you. Okay. You might want to ask Mitch. I, I will. Thank you. Alderman Stephan. Yes, I just wanted to see if you to clarify what doesn't say again, as far as the understanding we have is that the language has to do with the <coughs> Should we change it to make sure what we're agreeing on is, is what it says? Uh, 
I guess I read it, Alderman Stefan, as consistent with the, uh, I believe what Alderman Groff indicated, that it uh, doesn't wipe the positions off the table of organization. They're still there, but they're not going to be able, when the department puts together their budget for 2004, to include those salaries for those positions in the budget. And, uh, and so I, I think that's what it says. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't aware of uh, what the intent was for tonight either, but I think that's what it, it does. Alderman Groff, question for you. We have Alderman, we have August 8th on that, correct? Rich, budget, we have to get everything in place. If you'd back it up to the 24th, I believe would be Don's next meeting in August, possibly somewhere. I think this is going to be a little bit late for the departments to submit the request after that point in time for us to process it and get it in, into the council. Uh, so we were looking at that at the first meeting, August 7th, of salary grievance uh, as, as a timeline to work with so the departments still have time to submit the request after that. Okay. Alderman Groff. Rich, do you have the number of positions that we're talking about? Uh, some are, I'm not sure in, in the police department whether it's one or four for different interpretations. Uh, and there's, well, Tom said about 13 in his uh, department, and then there's a housing environmental inspector. And uh, recently we had a programmer analyst uh, leave our department, so that's an opening there. So it would be approximately 17 if I count. Or right. 17 to 18 or something. Right, projected out somewhere around $800,000 maybe total um, wages with, with benefits. One in the fire department, okay. And that is one reason we asked for August 8th to give them time, give the department heads time to come in and request what they really truly need and we can go from there and get they, a good feeling of where the budget is. So we understand it now. They come to you first and then you tell them, go ahead, go to the salary agreement. Or Either or. Uh, Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Quick question. Uh, the second amendment to the resolution, my question is why would this be beneficial for our 2004 budget? Rich. In our uh, previous budget, such as 2003, we allowed the departments to request the, the capital outlay, uh, but then in order to meet the expenditure restraint limit, which uh, for 2003 was 2.3%, uh, we had to uh, remove the capital outlay appropriations. We knew we were going to fund that from um, a transfer from the cable funds. So we just established that in the first quarter of 2003 uh, and was not in the original budget. So what we're looking at reality here with the, with the budget parameters that are coming up, uh, we realize that uh, we will be following the same sequence um, and we will have a concern also about meeting expenditure restraints again this year. So we thought it was uh, logical just to postpone that portion of it until the first quarter of 2004 and have that funded from the cable funds again. Okay. <clears throat> if there's no other questions, no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? This is just um, on the amendment. If you want to roll call on that. Manny? No. Monty Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? No. Rinfleisch? No. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? No. Berg? No. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Nine ayes, um, seven noes. <laughs> Move to second resolution be put upon this passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Don't need one. Don't need one? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Now you need a roll call. Motion carried. Now you need a roll call. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty close. <laughs> okay. Monty Mayor. Moody? Aye. Perez? No. Marine Fleisch? No. Stefan? Aye. 
Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? No. Berg? No. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? No. 97. It comes out the same. Same with it. Okay. Okay. 757 through 761 to be referred. No, excuse me, lies over. Lies over. 762 through 769 to be referred. 770 will lie over. 771, by public protection and safety, recommending denying beverage operator license 5972 based on his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application, multiple, con multiple convictions on charges related to the proposed license activity and the status of the application as repeated law violator. And beverage operator license 6013 based on the applicant's ineligibility for a license. Alderman Benerwilly. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and deny the two licenses. Moved and seconded to accept and adopt the report of committee. Alderman Vanderwood. And I'd like to ask if uh, number 5972 and 6013 want to speak on their behalf? Uh, they're not here, Your Honor. Okay. <coughs> Okay, we have a motion before us. Is there any other discussion? Pat, would you call the roll, please? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Ben Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bird? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayer? Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. 772 will be referred. Matters laid over, excuse me, 1-3 RO by the City Planning Commission vacating the port, a part of South 12th Street from the north line of Indiana Avenue to the south line of the railroad right away. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance and report of officer be placed on file and the attached substitute ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded that the RO be accepted and filed and the ordinance be put in the general ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this street will never go through in, in the area that it is at this time. There's a railroad, railroad right away behind it, and the property will become part of uh, the two abutting properties of 1136 and 1206 <coughs> Indiana Avenue. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Ben Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Bauman, Berg, Bonet, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Groff, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Moody. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 648 will lie over. 650 resolution by Alderman Groff, Winninger, Bonet, transfer of appropriations in the 2003 budget. Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I move that the resolution, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Rinfleisch, Stephan, Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny, Monty Mayer, Moody, Aye. Perez. Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. 660, General 461 will lie over also. 660, General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, Wangaman, Vanderweel, amending the municipal code so as to require animal fanciers permits. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, this is a pet fanciers permit ordinance. And this ordinance is a result of a year-long effort by the Pet Fanciers Committee, a subcommittee of public protection and safety approved by the Common Council to address a serious problem in our community. Alderman Vanderwilly and Bauman, along with Pete Fullerton and Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams, has, has spent many hours uh, working on this ordinance, along with Melanie Nick, a citizen of our community, and Nicole Lenau, coming up with a workable and effective ordinance. The police and building inspection have not had a tool to deal with individuals that continually create problems 
for their neighbors by having more pets than they can properly care for. This ordinance does not limit the number of pets a person may own, nor does it prohibit anyone from having a pet. It does give a very necessary tool to the police and building inspection to solve some very real problems in our city. I congratulate the subcommittee for sticking with it and bringing forth an ordinance that is fair and will help to protect neighbors of pet owners that are not responsible in the care of their pets as well as the welfare of those animals. Your Public Protection and Safety Committee, upon review, recommends approval of this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just have a question for Steve. Do I need to amend this now or do I wait? Amend Please. this now? I need to make an amendment. Okay. Um, make a motion to amend section one of the pet fancier permit. Let's move to seconded. Alderman Vanderwill. In section 1857A, it needs to read In this section, the term domestic animal includes all animals encompassed under the definitions provided in section. 95.001 AD and 169.017 in Wisconsin statutes. Got that. Mm -hmm. I have a copy. Okay, we'll vote on amendment first. If there's another discussion on amendment. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. By way of clarification, the question came up uh, a week or so ago as to whether or not uh, parakeets or pet birds were included as domestic animals under the uh, this ordinance. Uh, the original definition didn't address birds, uh, but the, the additional definition in uh, 169.01 does include pet birds as domestic animals, so they would be included, uh, pet birds that would be parakeets or cockatoos or you know, any other type of that bird. It was just uh, felt to make it clearer up front as to what it's been, what's being covered. Okay. Alderman Bowen, did you want to speak on the amendment? No, it's okay. uh, just under general discussion. Okay, when we get back. Alderman Rainflesh, did you want to speak on the amendment? Yeah, concerning the definition as well, uh, fish. Does that include the definition? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't asked to look at that. I, I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. And uh, off the cuff, I don't have an answer for you. You'll have to look at that one up. Get back to you. Okay, we have an amendment before us. Would you call the roll, please? You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Okay. No. Alderman Vanderwill, you want to pass it as amended? Make a motion. Okay. okay. It's been moved to, moved to second to pass as amended. Under discussion. Alderman Baum. Thank you, Honor, Your Honor. Even though um, I did ask to speak earlier, this is fine. I'll still speak now. Um, when you were talking about fish earlier, yeah, fish can also cause quite an odor when their water becomes acidic. And when it becomes acidic, it's going to definitely start stinking big time. So that's the answer to that. But uh, otherwise, I'm probably the most, uh, or one of the most responsible people uh, concerning pets on this council. And needless to say, I, when I was asked to be on this committee, I felt very honored to do so. Although it was a subcommittee, I worked very hard along with Alderman Vanny Willey and the other persons named by Alderman Werner. Um, in the beginning, I was very apprehensive about the permit. And then as we were going through it, we did realize that the numbers we did put in here, again, as mentioned earlier, do not restrict the number of pets a person can own. It basically does state, though, that if they become um, out of hand, this is when we'll be taking over um, with our permits and what have you. Their permits are also extremely inexpensive. Um, and if they are purchasing licenses for their dogs and cats and or the pot-bellied pigs, the uh, permit would be included with it. Otherwise, it is only a $3 cost for the permit. Thank you. Alderman <coughs> Vanderwell. Thank you, Honor. I just wanted to add one thing that uh, that Alderman Bauman and Warner didn't catch or cover. Uh, 
A lot of citizens have talked to me about the pet stores in town related to this permit, and I just wanted to clear, clarify that they are included. The pet stores are included under this permit. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please, Pam? Stephen? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warner? Aye. Winninger? No. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayer? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? No. Rinfleisch? No. 12 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carried. 773 will go to Plan Commission. 774 will go to Plan Commission. Steve, other matters? 775 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication received by the Mayor from Dolores Olson of the Chamber of Commerce requesting various items from the City for the upcoming event on August 9th at the Arts Center and Weill Center for Kevin Costner. Public Works. 776 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from David Brownson requesting the City deed a parcel of property to him located on the west side of his lot that borders the railroad tracks. Plan Commission. 777 is a resolution by Alderperson Bauman authorizing entering into agreement with Sigma Environmental Services for the environmental observation and documentation for 2003 construction activities at Harbor Center Pier in the amount not to exceed $49,350 and for phase two environmental site assessment at the northwest corner of South 8th and Indiana in the amount of $18,855. That will go to finance. Move to the second to adjourn, under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor?